undercarriage components on crawler dozers are undergoing some large changes in engineering. In this video, I'll show you some of the newer technologies you are likely to see on new and low hour used crawler tractors. This is the fourth video program in this series about tracked undercarriage. The information in my previous video programs applies to everything in this program. Links to the previous programs are provided in the comments section of YouTube. In the previous video on high drive undercarriage, we showed you this D6T. In addition to the high drive design, this machine has what Caterpillar calls System 1 undercarriage. If we look closely, we can see the track links look different than standard chains. There are outside links and inside links. The inside links carry the bushings, while the outside links have the pins pressed into them. The pins all have rubber plugs in the ends indicating that they are sealed and lubricated. Both the outside and inside links have wider rail sections in the middle. What can't be seen in the video is that the bushings rotate on the pins. Because they can turn, they no longer slide against the sprocket teeth when the machine is traveling in reverse. Having to turn pins and bushings on this type of track chain is something that is no longer considered. System 1 undercarriage can be found on both oval and high drive machines from D3 up to D6 sizes. A Caterpillar website also shows it available for D8 size machines, but so far I've not seen it on a D8. Komatsu also uses this type of track chain on their oval track dozers. They call their system PLUS, Rotating Bushing Undercarriage. PLUS stands for Parallel Link Undercarriage System. According to the Komatsu website, they offer PLUS undercarriage on D37-24 up to their D85-18 models of machines. Komatsu dozers use standard front idlers with riding flanges and a raised center that matches the inside widths of the track links. Look close at how the track links ride on the idlers. More of the links are in contact with the flanges as they ride over the wheel. The wide sections of the chain rail sit perfectly on the circumference of the front idlers. If you look from inside the chains at the front idlers, you can see the amount of clearance between the center flange of the idler and the track pad. Caterpillar uses what they call center tread idlers. They have no riding flanges and the track bushings ride directly on the top surfaces of the idlers. While this reduces wear on the rail parts of the link, it does place a lot of stress on the pin and bushing joints, particularly if material packing occurs between the idler and the track pads. So what are the things to look for that cue you into problems with this type of track? The first item to give you a clue about problems with this type of track will be the adjustment of the front idlers. Since the tracks are sealed and lubricated, the chains are not supposed to stretch. Any adjustment out would indicate the probability of dry joints in the chains and that closer inspection is needed. This would apply to both the high drive and oval track designs. Dry joints may end up looking like the painted joints in these photos. Sharp sprocket teeth would be an indication of wear on standard undercarriage, but so far I haven't seen sharp teeth on System 1 or Plus undercarriage. Worn bottom rollers is an indication of overall wear, but you have to do some analysis of what you're looking at. I've seen where problems with System 1 chain required early replacement of the chain, but the bottom rollers weren't replaced. Bottom roller flanges that seem to be covering more of the chain links than normal may be a clue that this has happened in the past. Another clue to the history of the undercarriage is mismatched wear on the idlers. I've seen where front or rear idlers have been broken and replaced long before the bottom rollers were worn out. An idler with newer paint or showing much less wear than the rest of the idlers might indicate a problem in the past. The idlers on Komatsu dozers are standard flange type, and wear would be observed and considered like any standard type undercarriage. The new technologies have not been universally accepted at this point in time. The general attitude that I have observed is that the new stuff works well in some situations and not so well in others. 
Many end users have told me that they will stay with what they are familiar with until the life cycle costs of the new stuff are consistently less. In any case, dealers are putting machines with new undercarriage components in their rental fleets, so more of this stuff will hit the markets in the future. If this information is useful, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.